Welcome back to the crossover on this Labor Day Monday, September 2nd. We had a full slate of college football. We already have our first upset of the year. Arsenal dropped points. Liverpool won their first big game with Arnie Slott. We had a whole bunch of last-minute comebacks. Let's get into all of it. But before we get into all of that, I want to just make a deal with you, okay? If you go down and click that big red subscribe button for me, I can promise you that every day you will have a video on this channel to watch talking all things in sports. We're on the road currently to 1,000 subscribers. The more subscribers, the more likes. The bigger we can grow this community, the bigger that we can grow this channel, which obviously means we can upgrade our setup. We can get some cool guests on here to have some cool conversations for you guys to ask them questions, get to know them a little bit better, and get invited to certain events. Obviously, we're out here in New York City. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I want to show off. So uh, the more that we can grow this platform, the more that we can grow this together, the cooler guests, the cooler conversations, and the cooler places that we can go. So if you could just hit that subscribe button, it would mean the world to me. Now let's get into the video. All right, let's start off by talking about college football because this was the weekend that college football is officially back. We had a full slate of games. We had 16 Oklahoma versus Temple on Friday. Obviously, Oklahoma no longer have Dylan Gabriel. He has moved over to Oregon. But Jackson Arnold, 141 yards, 34 rushing yards, and three touchdowns didn't look too bad. Again, it is Temple. Oklahoma take care of them. 51 to 3. But then we had three games where we had two ranked teams playing each other. We'll start off with Georgia, obviously number one in the nation, defending champions, versus Clemson, who was ranked 14th. And the game was actually pretty close for a while. Clemson defense held off Georgia to only six points in the first half. And I kind of was expecting the Clemson offense to start picking it up, kind of get back into the game, but it never really happened. I mean, Clemson, 188 total yards. You compare that to Georgia, they had 169 just rushing 447 total Carson Beck looked great obviously favorite to win the Heisman this year or one of the favorites absolute dog Carson Beck is I was waiting for Clemson to come back I was waiting for Clemson to get into the game I was waiting for the offense to start doing something but Cade Klubnik I mean last year he had 19 touchdowns with only nine interceptions the year before that two touchdowns and three interceptions and to start the season not even a singular touchdown and he did throw an interception. So ball security there for Cade Klubnik continues to seem like it's going to be an issue this year. I thought Clemson was going to do a little bit better. The defense, again, didn't look bad, but they got to figure something out with that offense. Then we had number seven, Notre Dame at College Station to play Texas A&M. And this game was extremely close, 6-6 six to six at halftime. Notre Dame then outscores them 17-7 to seven in the second half. To give Notre Dame the win. Uh, the game was 13-13 to with two minutes left. So Texas A&M was never really out of this game until the very end. Jeremiah Love, 20-yard rushing touchdown. 91 rushing yards just for him on the night. That puts them up to 20-13. to Fourth and second with a minute and 30 left. It looked like Texas A&M was going to be able to pull off something crazy. But fourth and second. Connor Wagman pass is broken up. And that would be the game. 12 for 30. He went with two interceptions and only 100 yards. Troubles brewing over there in College Station. No no Johnny Manziel this year. And then the first upset of the year goes down in Vegas with 23-ranked USC beat 13th-ranked LSU. And me personally, I kind of think that LSU just beat themselves. I mean, 27 to 20 games, so it was close. First look at this post, Caleb Williams, USC, and Miller Moss had himself a day. He went 27 for 36, 378 yards, only one touchdown passing, but that doesn't really matter. Another close game, 20 to 20, one minute 40 left, 15 seconds left in the game, and there was a great, great, great throw by Miller Moss, one-handed catch, and then what would be the icing on the cake. There's a targeting penalty, okay, which would kind of be... The whole MO of the night for LSU puts them right on the 13-yard line. Before that targeting, they were like right on the cusp of maybe field goal range, maybe not field goal range. The, the kicker had already made, like I think it was like a 40-yarder early in the game, but he also missed a 20-yarder. So there was questions there. Maybe they missed the kick, but with that targeting penalty, puts them on the 13-yard line. They run the ball. They end up scoring 27-20. to 20. LSU 99 penalty yards. I think there was like three targeting calls in the game. There was an excessive celebration where the guys like pointing gun. It was a whole mess that was lacy there, but he did have 94 uh receiving yards 
and a touchdown. The schedule does get a little bit easier here for LSU. They got Nichols, South Carolina, UCLA, South Alabama. But then they got Ole Miss. They got A&M. They got Alabama. They got Florida. And they got Oklahoma. So LSU really needs to start figuring their stuff out. Uh, other places, we had Ohio State beat Akron 56-6. No surprise there. Oregon, who we just talked about, 24-14. I was kind of expecting a little bit bigger of a margin, especially playing against Idaho, but I guess it's just first game of the season. Oregon, everybody's talking about the best team in the nation up there with Georgia, but 24-14, they got a lot to prove still. Number four, Texas, 52-0 versus Colorado State. The big story there, Arch Manning came off of the bench and threw his first touchdown pass. Good to see that happen. Uh, Bama, 63-0 against Western Kentucky. First game after Saban. They look great. I mean, they were posing for pictures on the field. You can definitely feel that it's a little bit looser, kind of like a Bill Belichick kind of vibe. Once Tom left Bill, it was kind of looser. Once Saban leaves Bama, the players seem kind of looser, but the results better stay there. 76-0, Old Miss versus Furman. Uh, Penn State, 34, West Virginia, 12. In Morgantown, there was a lot of buzz, a lot of excitement in Morgantown for this game. There was like a long rain delay or lightning delay or whatever it was called. Uh, but Penn State takes care of business there. Michigan 30, Fresno 10, Tennessee destroyed Chattanooga 69 to 3, Oklahoma State 44 to South Dakota, uh, Kansas beat UT Martin 41 to 6, the University of Miami, the U is back, we're going to talk about the U a little bit later on in this video, 41 to 17, transfer quarterback Cam Ward 385 yards for three touchdowns for me, the highlight of this game. After the game it was over and after the University of Miami boys were getting off the field, all of the recruits for Florida were right there and they were just yapping them back and forth, telling the recruits, you better come to Miami. We own Florida. So that was kind of cool to see there. Arizona 61, New Mexico 39 in an absolute shootout. Iowa 40 points. Iowa putting up 40 points. Traditionally, Iowa is just straight defense. The offense always struggles. Cade McNamara back. Obviously, he was injured all of last year. 251 passing touch, uh, passing yards, three touchdowns. Uh, 241 rushing yards with two touchdowns. If the Iowa offense does have it figured out, like it seems like they did, they could provide a couple of uh, they could provide a couple of uh, of surprises here this year. That would be cool to see. Now let's switch from college football over to the Prem because Arsenal dropped points on week three. Brighton, Arsenal, both coming in, having won their first two games. Arsenal 2-0 at Villa Park. Brighton coming off of the heels of that Joao Pedro goal in the 95th minute to beat United. And Arsenal actually capitalized first from a defensive mistake, 38 minutes in. The defender misjudges the bounce. There's a poach in there from Saka. Saka just gets a little, a little dink forward to Havertz. Havertz one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Nice little chip over the keeper. Beautiful finish. Uh, leading at the half, seeming to... Fully be in control of the game going into halftime. And then it all changes in the second half. Because five minutes in, Declan Rice gets his second yellow. And Arsenal are down to 10 men. Now, there's a lot of controversy going on with this Declan Rice second yellow card. And for me, it's 100% a second yellow. I mean, the first yellow was undoubtedly a yellow card. Could have even been a red if you really look at it. But I guess the spikes weren't fully up. They're a little bit down, which is what saves him. But he kicks the ball away. And then he goes down, pretends like he's injured, makes a whole scene out of it. Now, the only issue with this, because by the letter of the law, it's a second yellow card. It's a yellow card, no doubt about it. The only issue is that Joao Pedro had done kind of the same thing earlier in the game. But it was in like the 10th to 15th minute. It was somewhere in there. And that's kind of the reason that I feel like he doesn't get a yellow card, just because it's so early on into the game. But Rice kicks it away. Controversial, again, just because you kind of want that consistency. But I fully agree with the second yellow card decision. Down to uh, 10 men. Nine minutes later, Dunk with a beautiful pass. One end to the other into Minte. Gabriel misses the tackle. Raya makes the original save. But then Joao Pedro is there for a poacher's goal. Puts it away. One to one. And that would be it. Both teams would have a couple more chances afterwards. None would really go down for me. The best player on the field was Calafiori. I think he's doing great at Arsenal uh, right now. We've got two weeks off now here for both of these teams to kind of figure themselves out. But uh, not good for Arsenal. Again, it's still early on in the season. You know, City's going to drop points at some point. But uh, not great. That was by far the big surprise of the week. But now let's uh, speed through some other stuff that happened here in the Prem this weekend. 
Brentford without Tony. Obviously, Tony has just signed with Saudi Arabia. He was in the stands. Ruined Ramsdale's debut versus Southampton. 3-1, to one, two goals from Mbembu. Ipswich, they score again early in the 15th minute. But Adama Traore goal 1-1. One to one. Ipswich get the first Premier League points. Villa 2-1 to one at Leicester. Villa still missing Diego Carlos, Matty Cash, Mings, Kamara, Olsen. And they still have six points. Their only loss was to Arsenal the week before. Forest and Wolves each have tied their last three games. And history repeats itself. They tied 1-1 again. Forest in the 10th minute. Wolves in the 12th. And after that, nothing to show. Man City take a trip to London to take on West Ham. And Holland becomes the seventh player in history to have back-to-back -back Premier League uh, hat-tricks. Joining Fernando Torres, Drogba, Henri, Aguero, Shearer, and Ronaldo. And probably one of the ugliest kits that I've seen in a while. I mean, these brand new Man City kits, I am most definitely not a fan of. Uh, he also becomes the fourth Highest all-time Premier League hat-trick scores. Aguero has 12 hat-tricks in 275 games. Alan Shearer, 11 hat-tricks in 441 games. Uh, nine hat-tricks for Robbie Fowler in 379 games. And Erling Holland, eight hat-tricks in only 69 games. So he's on a record pace here. I mean, if you kind of multiply that by three... He should be at way over Aguero's, uh, Aguero's mark here within the next coming years. Ruben Diaz's own goal is the only goal that West Ham scores. And kind of the funniest part about this is that the day before, in an interview, Bernardo Silva was talking about how much time Ruben Diaz spends in the gym. And they asked him, do you spend that much time in the gym? And he said, no, the gym is only for people who don't know how to play with their feet. And kind of a clumsy, I don't fully blame Ruben Diaz, but kind of a clumsy way he does concede that own goal. And then Chelsea coming off of the high of a 6-2 win versus Wolves. And then the low of a 2-1 loss versus Servette. And then not being able to sign a striker. Obviously, they were in for Oshiman. They were in for Tony. End up not landing either one of them. They did present Jadon Sancho, the new number 19, before the game. And that would kind of be the only highlight of the night. Nico Jackson did score in the 25th minute. But then Eze in the 53rd gets their first point for Palace. They came in to play Chelsea with zero points, and they get their first point off of Chelsea. Obviously, they lost to West Ham, lost to Brentford, and now tied Chelsea. And Chelsea absolutely dominated possession, dominated everything. 2.37 expected goal for Chelsea, 0.54 for uh, Palace, and somehow Chelsea still find a way to not win this game. It's kind of been the story of recent times here with Chelsea. Let's hope that they can figure it out. Somebody else who kind of dominated everywhere, but just couldn't get it done. Tottenham had 20 shots, 66% possession, and still somehow lost 2-1 to Newcastle. Sandro Tonali is back. That was the big story of the day. Sandro Tonali returns. He gets a hero's welcome. Obviously, he, was, uh, he had a one-year suspension because of the whole gambling stuff. Barnes in the 37th minute scores for Newcastle, up 1-0. One, uh, one nothing. And then Byrne with an own goal makes it 1-1. And then Isaac would ice the game in the 78th minute with a goal for them. So 20 shots for Tottenham, and you can't even score your own goal. Tough. United coming off of a heartbreak versus Brighton, obviously, last week. 95th minute, drop Pedro scores. We already talked about that earlier. Liverpool unbeaten, and they would remain unbeaten as Arnie Slack gets his first big game in charge, and he did not disappoint. Diaz, Brace, Salah, goal. Gives them a 3-0 win, and they haven't conceded in the Premier League at all. Three games in, zero goals conceded, a top of the league with City, obviously. And Liverpool is looking so good. I thought they might take a little step back after Klopp. I thought there would be new ideas. They would have to get adjusted to playing a different type of way. But Arnie Slot has the boys buzzing. Again, zero goals conceded in three games, and you're never going to lose if you never concede. And then the craziest game of the weekend... Bournemouth down 2-0 to Everton in the 87th minute. Surely Everton cannot fumble this. They're up 2-0, 87th minute. Keane and Calvert-Lewin had scored two goals in seven minutes. Absolute dogs there for Everton. But then Bournemouth says, hey, you scored two in seven minutes. We're going to score three to win this. Semenyo in the 87th minute. Cook in the 90 plus two. And then Sinistera in the 90 plus four. Everton they were able to save off uh, relegation last year. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it this year. 
zero points through three games, negative eight goal differential. And speaking of last minute winners, Parma, who has been playing some great footy, up one nothing versus Napoli, who now uh, have Oshiman just sitting at home until January. Oshiman apparently he had that move to Chelsea. The personal terms weren't agreed upon, so they said, you know what, you're not playing for us. You're gonna sit there at home until January until you find a new job. They took away his number. They gave it to Lukaku, who had who they had just signed. In the 75th minute, Parma gets a red for Suzuki, and this is where the game would all change. Napoli brings in three goal contributions off of the bench, all coming from new players they just signed. Neres, who obviously came from my beloved Benfica, gets an assist off the bench. Lukaku from Chelsea gets a goal off the bench. Spinazzola, who came over from Roma, also gets an assist after coming off the bench in the 90 plus two lukaku scores 90 plus six and guisa scores two goals in four minutes at the very end of the game to pull off the comeback 2-1 win for napoli over parma espanol versus rayo vallecano they were tied 1-1 after eight minutes and it would take a whole other 90 minutes for veliz to get the goal for espanol to win in the 96th minute Atletico de Madrid tied 0-0 versus Atletico Bilbao. Williams had already scored in the game, but it was ruled that he was offside. So, nil-nil. In the 92nd minute, after being subbed on just four minutes before Correa scores, Angel Correa, what a dog of a performance on the pitch for four minutes, scores a goal, gets a three points, and gets right on out of there. Fiorentina coming off of that massive penalty kick win to secure the Conference League. They're uh, they're down 2-1 to Monza. Uh, in the 96th minute, Goosens, who is on loan, the fullback from Union Berlin with a powerful header off of a corner and gets the game e- equalized. 2-2, Fiorentina versus Monza. Fiorentina, third straight tie to start off the season and fifth straight tie in a row because obviously in qualies, they tied twice against Puskas would ultimately win it on penalty kicks. Leverkusen, who has not lost in forever, seemingly over a year. Two, uh, they're up 2 nothing with goals from fullbacks Grimaldo and Frimpong. Right before the half, Campbell cuts the lead in half. Says maybe there's a chance. 2-1 at halftime. 12 minutes into the second half, Openda comes back, ties the, uh, ties the game, and it looks like the streak could be over. And then in the 80th minute, Openda would do it again. Gets the brace completes the comeback and the streak for Leverkusen is over Red Bull Leipzig had four shots on net scored three goals I mean Leverkusen dominated and controlled every other stat possession expected goal shots chances created they controlled everything and somehow still end up losing luck was just not on their side I mean throughout the past year they've had lucky comebacks and lucky stuff all over the place at some point the luck was bound to turn I don't think Leverkusen deserved to lose but if you remember last video, I did say I was tempted to pick Red Bull Leipzig. You guys didn't want to listen to me. It ended up happening. Pat myself on the back for that one. Uh, Stuttgart looking like they got, they got a lot of hype with these new transfers that they got. They're looking to build off of finishing second in the Bundesliga last year. Looking to bounce back from a 3-1 loss in week one. Week one, they scored like I think it was like two minutes into the game. Or something like that. End up losing 3-1. Now this time, they're up 2-0 against Mainz. Mainz gets a penalty in the 43rd minute. 2-1. Uh, tied up in the 62nd minute by Burkhart. 2-2. Two two. And then Ryder from Stuttgart says, hey, not so fast. The comeback was almost there. But it's not going to be enough. They score in the 88th. But then Mainz says... We told you we are not going away. They get a goal in the 90 plus fourth to tie it up. Three to three would be the end result. Somebody who didn't need a comeback, somebody who didn't need any last minute heroics was Barcelona as they beat Valladolid 7 0. Three goals from Rafinha, one from Lewandowski, one from Kunde, one from Olmo, one from Torres. They have the same amount of goals in that one game that Real Madrid has had in the past. Four games, they are cooking over there with Flick. And speaking of Real Madrid, Mbappe has finally scored his first goal at the Barnabeu. The first goal in the league for Real Madrid as a beautiful, beautiful back heel pass from Fede Valverde, who has by far been their best uh, player this season. 
uh, lays Mbappe perfectly. Mbappe finishes it. A couple of minutes later in the 75th, Vinny with a great run into the box. He gets fouled. Penalty. I was surprised Vinny didn't take the penalty. He gives it to Mbappe. Mbappe break. Whew. After all of that, what a way to take a little break because now footy has two weeks off. No club football for the next two weeks. We have the Nations League both in uh, in the Americas and in Europe, so we'll be covering that. But we got to get to the dogs of the day, and we got to get to these hot takes because today we have a very, very clear winner on who the dog of the day should be. Today's dog of the day, this man has been at Atletico de Madrid for 10 years. He's seen the likes of Mandzukic, Diogo Costa, Griezmann, Fernando Torres, Suarez, Felix, and now Julian Alvarez and Sorloth come through while he's had to wait in the shadows and just keep grinding and just keep working. And when he was called upon, when his team needed him the most, Angelito Correa delivered because he got subbed on in the 88th minute in a tie game. His team needing a goal. And just four minutes after being on the pitch, he delivers the goal and delivers the three points to Atletico de Madrid so that they can keep on track with city rivals Real Madrid and just two points behind Barcelona. Absolute dog of a performance. Welcome to the wall of dogs. Angel Correa, 100% deserved. I mean, that is the definition of a dog. He doesn't get the time. He doesn't get the recognition but when his team needs him the most. He goes out there and delivers. And today's hot take of the day, the U is back. And they are going to win the ACC. And you can put it down now. They will be in the national championship game. Quote it, clip it, and ship it. And at the end of the season, remember who told you first. Today's schedule of the day, we've got Florida State looking to bounce back against that loss versus Georgia Tech in Ireland. They take on uh, Boston College. We're three days away from NFL football. We are so, so, so close. We've got a full slate of MLB. The Dodgers looking to win the series versus the Diamondbacks. Yankees starting the season versus the uh, defending champion Texans. Looking for their 80th win here tonight. And the Red Sox playing against the Mets starting a series there. That has been everything that happened this weekend. That's what's going to be happening today. And what an addition to the wall of dogs from Angel Correa. Not much going on tonight, but we'll be watching baseball. We'll be watching FSU. And very, very shortly, we will be back to watching the NFL. I'm going to be back tomorrow to cover everything that happened tonight. Back tomorrow.